Well, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, for today's panel discussion. We've got representatives here from two Kinex's customers. And I think the thing that's fascinating about this discussion today is that there's going to be, I think, similarity and overlap coming from two organizations that are very different from each other. So you'll learn about those organizations and our panelists in a second. But today's session is focused on how to have a successful Kinexus rollout. And we are joined uh, by John Brown, the continuous improvement manager of a company called Crosby's based in Canada. And uh, we're joined by Rob Pitney, process improvement engagement uh, and system co-owner. We'll hear more about that title. I, I stumbled through that, but we'll let you introduce yourself, Rob, and tell more about that title. Um, from an organization that I've, I've had the chance to visit a couple of times, UMass Memorial Healthcare. So we're looking at the food industry and healthcare, hospital health system type settings. And we'll look for similarities in terms of continuous improvement practices and, and maybe differences. And we'll talk about how both of these organizations have incorporated Kinexus into the improvement work that they do. Put the focus on our panelists. So again, we're joined by John Brown and Rob Pitney. Um, John, maybe we can start with you in terms of introductions. If you can tell us um, a little bit about Crosby's, uh, the company, and then it would be good to hear a little bit about um, your background um, with lean or continuous improvement or however you would frame that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, Crosby's is a, an, old, an, old, an old organization. They've been based in the Maritimes in Canada uh, for 150 years. Um, we make a variety of food and beverage products, um, both for retail and for uh, business to business. So we do a lot of bulk supply to bakeries and places like that. Um, we do uh, powdered beverages, drink mixes, um, and we do a lot of uh, co-manufacturing for some of the big, uh, big players in the food market as well. Um, so the majority of my career has been in uh, um, quality assurance actually both in the UK and Canada um, and in 2016 whilst at Crosby's I moved to the position of continuous improvement manager um, so that wasn't a position that existed so Crosby's really didn't have a continuous improvement culture or a platform so that led me to uh, try and investigate uh, looking for software solutions of how we might uh, best used what we could use to sort of gather the information for our improvements and track and trend, uh, which led me to find Kinexus. And we're very glad you did. So we'll get to hear more about your practices um, during the hour here today. So thank you, John. And we're joined also by Rob Pitney. Rob, if you could do a similar introduction about uh, your organization and um, if you can explain your, your role as well. Sure, Rob Pitney with UMass Memorial Health. I joined the organization about six months ago. So I'm new there. UMass Memorial Health is a uh, hospital-based system. We have about 15,000 caregivers. We have, I believe, four hospitals currently. We're expanding to a fifth come close of the transaction this summer. Um, wide range from true hospital services to mental health, substance abuse, um, adult care, memory care, all kinds of things that we do. And we have moved from a paper-based system to this virtual system that Kinexus has graciously allowed us to purchase and or, or at least have license fees on. But uh, it's a quite quite the challenge to roll it out to 15,000 people. Um, I am a part of our human resources department. And you'd say, why human resources? And that's what I asked when I applied for the job. Um, but they, at UMass Memorial Health, the president and CEO is a doctor and he completely buys into lean, Dr. Dixon. And he says his career has been made because of lean. 
and he would not be in his position without it. Um, my lean experience started many moons ago in the late early nineties, actually, um, with Pareto charts by hand and manual, uh, count charts and everything before we had any computers. Um, but I became a, a certified lean six Sigma belt black belt in 2008. I've spent 30 years in the health insurance industry. Mm. So I've switched teams to go to the provider side and I'm learning a whole bunch, um, but the principles of lean and Six Sigma apply no matter where you are, really, well, regardless of the industry, you can make this work. Yeah. And you're right, Dr. Dixon, I've had the, the privilege of um, interviewing him a couple of times. Uh, uh, on, on podcasts and as part of a panel at a conference, I've had the chance to visit there. And, and you're right. I appreciate that Dr. Dixon um, is, is, has been open to ideas from other industries, but then um, to, to be a leader mm-hmm. and, and to, to help drive the continuous improvement journey there at, at, at UMass Health. So we'll, we'll get a chance to explore that um, a little bit more. And um, I'm, I'm glad you all are also customers. You've been at UMass customer for just a couple of months, correct? Um, officially, we, we began our deployment with pilots on January 24th, I believe. Whatever that Monday was. <laughs> okay. And, and John at Crosby's, I, I don't know how long you've been a customer. So. Um, I would say probably getting on for 18 months to two years. So there might be some lessons learned that you have at this point that could be shared with UMass. And, you know, it's uh, different industries, different size organizations, but we'll, we'll look and see, mm-hmm. you know, what, what, what sort of ideas uh, we can bounce back and forth um, for, for your own benefit and for the benefit of the audience or for whoever ends up uh, watching this here. So, you know, maybe we'll maybe jump into some of the detail about continuous improvement practices. Sometimes people would frame this as part of a lean management system. If we look at the practice of huddles, I wonder if we could, um, you know, kind of share some of your practices about that. How do you use Kinexus to facilitate that? Um, John, if, if you'd like to go first, please. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> prior to Kinexus, we would we would hold um, our, a meeting that we have every day uh, called our daily operational review. So that's where we would look at uh, the previous day's production, look at the numbers, look at the uh, any quality issues, any safety issues. And we would do that traditionally around a whiteboard. Um, and so... Um, we would talk about the things that went on the day before, but the challenge with the whiteboard um, was always keeping it up to date, not really being able to look at the information that we're tracking and trending in a live view or in a graphical view very easily. So you can imagine it was all writing on a whiteboard with pens. Um, so we work with Taylor, our account manager, to develop um, our daily operational review process in Kinexus. So um, we've been doing that now for around a year and it go, it's going really well. Um, so we track things like safe and unsafe observations, quality concerns, production line performance. So within Kinexus, we've got our, our graph showing the data on the cards in the boards. We even track our 5S compliance on there. So every day we look at our 5S compliance. Um, Just Do It is a program that we implemented as well. So obviously simple, easy improvements. So even that we track. So we have a, a weekly metric that we expect to have two new improvements completed and brought forward from the team. Um, and then the real, the real way that it's helped us is um, employee recognition is a big part. So we do our employee recognition through, through the system as well. So that helps us make sure that everybody understands that they've been recognized. And when we do improvements, they um, get, get spread around. And we actually have uh, the slideshow feature now that we use in Kinexus as well. So our daily operational review boards 
are displayed in slideshows in our lunch rooms and in our main office. Um, and the real benefit that we've found is um, the ability in Kinexus to track all the action items that come from the door meeting, um, and especially from the perspective of reviewing the effectiveness of the solution that we put in place. Hmm. So one of our pitfalls before was the tracking. It's, all, it's okay to bring forward action items, but once you've implemented it, you then obviously need to go back and make sure the implementation was successful. So in Kinexus, we do the review and it automatically sets it out for a month after to get reviewed. So then we, we look at the items that are due for review every day as well. So we found that transition from sort of uh, paper and pen to digital to be really uh, beneficial and quite easy to do in Kinexus. Great. And you talk about two improvements per person. That's per what time frame? So we have we actually we actually have eight different just do it programs in our in our organization. So each department has its own just do it program, and so our cadence there is we expect each department to come up with two improvements each week, mm. and we set the champion or the the department the goal of also implementing two improvements each week, and obviously they are primarily easy to do quick wins quick fixes uh -huh. um, but that's something that we we track now as i say in our daily operational review because it's something that's really easy to lose sight of so we just have like a, a bar chart showing that's got our expected our expectation per department and the actual that we get All right well thanks so we'll, we'll come back and we'll talk more about what a lot of people would label bottom up improvement or um, just do it. So small Kaizen. And I know that's been a big part of the equation at um, UMass Health. Um, uh, so Rob, could you share a little bit about the huddle process? And I know that predates Kinexus. So it'd be good to hear like about some of, like here we always talk about methodology, the leadership that's involved, and then the technology if, if you can share a little bit on all three aspects when it comes to huddles. Well, since I just started six months ago, my experience has been tribal through the uh, folks that have been here. And mm -hmm. primarily it's been paper boards and whiteboards. Um, however, because of the pandemic last March, we had to quickly transition a lot of our employees that are based in Worcester, Mass, home, okay? I'm working from home still. And uh, the huddle around a board didn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So there were some teams that experimented with some Excel methodology, some SharePoint methodology, even something called the Trello board. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what was the catalyst for us moving towards looking at this type of a solution. And um, so huddles are, are done in both forms, actually three forms we look at. One is the in-person team, and that still happens today at the hospitals. Mm -hmm. And one is the completely remote team, such as HR right now or IT right now. So that's all being done virtually. And that's why we started with our um, support staff in our deployment. So everybody that was work at home was first, so we could get the most value out of it and get them reconnected. And then secondly, we have the hybrid team, which is some people are at home, mm. some are at the hospital or the facility or the group home or whatever the case might be. And you have to build the board or build an electronic media presence, think large screen television, to facilitate from. And this is very much where we're in the learning phase right now and the experimenting phase. And some teams are catching on really fast to the new world and some are not quite as quick, but you know, we're gonna deploy 40 pilot equipment sites, different teams. Um, and these teams are doing more of the just do it type of uh, improvements. Uh, than grand projects. We have A3s for more of that, where 
we're working on building out uh, project management within Kinexus, but we wanted to walk before we could run. Mm -hmm. And it all starts with the huddle team. We currently have, uh, we believe, 650 to 700 teams. Right now we have 400 teams deployed in Innovation Station, which is our name for Kinexus. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's evolving, the huddle team. But it's really driven by, you know, that group of people talking about whatever their today day-to-day -day problems are that need to be addressed. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of our customers use, you know, different modes of improvement, if you will. You know, when we started off, it, it's coming up on 10 years since we came to market and our first customers were really uh, in, and the software was really targeted um, around John, what you call just do it's small Kaizen, you know, Greg Jacobson, um, our CEO, uh, co-founder was you know, inspired by Masaki Amai's book, Kaizen, which really focuses on getting everybody involved in small improvements, um, small redesigns. And what our software does has grown with our customers. As customers said, well, we're also doing A3s. We also have projects. We also have strategic initiatives. And, and so um, the software capability has, has grown um, you know, based on what our customers are doing so they can have all of that improvement in one place. Um, you know, I wanted to ask, this, this was gonna be question five, but maybe we'll just build on what Rob was saying about the pandemic. Um, John, I, I know you have some experiences of uh, to share about how the pandemic affected your day-to-day -day work, how it affected your operations at Crosby's, if, if you could share a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so when when um, COVID first hit, we were actually um, still trying to develop some of the rollout of Kinexus um, with Taylor, and um, we'd we'd got some meetings scheduled that we would um, obviously have on a frequent basis. But as it turned out, um, we really struggled with um, keeping employees in the building. So I kind of quickly went from a continuous in management position to being a line operator to keep the wheels of the business running. Um, and so, yeah, that, that was a big challenge. Um, we are at a stage now where we've kind of got our people, we've got good people back in the building. Um, people are back in their normal roles and their normal positions. Um, but it really impacted Crosby's uh, multifold so we we were we were short of people but our business was doubled or quadrupled because people were staying at home and a lot of the things that we sell are uh, baking ingredients so people were at home baking more um, but we didn't have the people to make the product so we it was a it was a real challenge for us um and then obviously the whole supply chain has been affected too. So our business today is still um, benefiting, I would say, from, from COVID, from a sort of um, sales perspective, but the raw material supply chain is, is a real struggle right now. Um, just delays and having to try and plan out uh, procurement and things like that is really difficult. So. Yeah, so I, I, for me, it was very valuable going and working on the production lines. I actually learned a lot um, that actually helped support improvements. And I came away with ideas that I'd never have got without that experience. So demand for, yeah, people are staying at home more. They're eating at home. They're yeah. wanting comfort foods of, of different types. Uh, yeah, so we do we do we do hot chocolate in pouches. So that's something that's really people people like that when they want to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then obviously our primary our prime product molasses, which is found in a lot of bed breads and baked goods. And so yeah, there's a lot of recipes that call for it. And rum. It's a raw material for oh, rum. Yes, and rum, which can be very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So Rob, I know your time at UMass um, has only been during the pandemic, but what, what, what do you have other impressions to share, you know, from what your colleagues and, and others are saying about 
um, adapting to pandemic times, or maybe now if we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel, do you have thoughts about how things will adapt as more people maybe come back to the traditional workplace setting? Yeah, I, the pandemic became the be all and end all. And a lot of our quote improvement work got dropped. Teams stopped huddling. They stopped meeting because of various challenges. Um, people were shuffled all around the organization doing other, odd, other jobs other than their own. You know, we, we stood up a vaccination facility we stood up a field hospital, which was one of the largest that was um, the most beds utilized in the country. Um, we built out testing processes early on last spring. You know, there were so much things that became much more important, but actually the nuts and bolts of continuous improvement and idea sharing and idea development to problem solve were all very active during this time. It just wasn't necessarily formulated or captured in a database, mm. uh, you know, and recorded that way. So um, the evolution um, to identifying the catalyst to the need to have a common solution across the network to a label, enable us to see what's really going on is what I think is the real benefit of Kinexus because we go from practically zero grit information, you know, a number of counts of ideas to now being able to monitor them through the various phases. And it's, it's really eye-opening. And we chose purposely to have a completely open system. Uh -huh. So every caregiver or think employee can see every other team, including the executive team, you know, the core executive leadership, their team is for the public to see. So it, it raises awareness and importance. And we strive to have one idea per person per year mm -hmm. is the goal. So we're still only a, a, a third of the way through the process. And we haven't even gotten, you know, three quarters of our staff or a, a third of our staff is not yet on board. That happens June 1st. Right. They're not yet on, they're not yet a Kinexus. They don't have a Kinexus login. No, they don't. They're not turned on, so to speak. Sure. And we're still building out the network locations for yeah. it. Yeah. So. so there's been sort of a parallel track where over a period of a couple of years, continuous improvement, engagement, and practices have spread. And now on top of that is the spread of the software, the, yeah. the system for people to use. The continuous engagement started in 2012 when Dr. Dixon arrived. Yeah. And it's it's built up and, and then it kind of took a little hi hiatus or dip volume wise in fiscal year 2020, but it's picking back up and I think we're gonna bring it to the next level as far as our ability to, let's call it borrow ideas from our, our similar counterparts in a different hospital that do the same function as we do. Right, yeah. So um, okay, moving on to, we'll, we'll talk more about the software, but um, this, is, this is a portion, um, if we label the segment, it might, uh, we might label this uh, embarrass some colleagues, meaning my colleagues at Kinexus, because you know, the, the, the Kinexus solution is not just the software. You know, Rob, you mentioned, yeah, license fee and, you know, so there's yeah. a contr contractual agreement, but, you know, we've built a great team at, at Kinexus and, you know, John, you mentioned Taylor already. And, and I guess, you know, the question for each of you is to talk a little bit about the support that you get from different people at Kinexus and getting started, ramping things up. If you need help and support over time, um, we have an opportunity to give them some recognition and just to maybe share, you know, of how they've helped you. Um, John, if, if you can go first with that, please. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> Taylor's been our account manager since the start. Um, and before that, uh, we worked with the, the rollout team. Um, I really can't remember the name of the people that we worked with, but it was... Uh, it was very organized, very well done, and very, very good support. So um, basically from 
what we re- what I really liked was from the very beginning, it was all being rolled out and tailored to suit what we needed from a system. Um, from the point of view of the structure, um, the departments, the different programs that we wanted to do. Um, yeah, and then and then obviously once we got into the the meat of it all, working with Taylor to develop our particular solutions, whether it be how we would do an A3 or how we would do a DMAIC or just how we wanted to see the Just Do It programs uh, roll out was all very good. And, and to, this, to, the, to the extent that our, our VP of operations has asked me a few times, um, like, John, how much, how much is this costing us all the time that you keep spending with the Kinexus team? And I'm like, it's all part and parcel of, of, the, of what we already pay. So I can work with Taylor on a weekly basis or I can work with Taylor on a monthly basis and the support has been invaluable. Um, and even to the extent that, you know, Taylor will reach out when enhancements roll out and say, okay, John, we've enhanced this. We had a conversation this morning about the badges enhancement um, to see whether it can uh, help improve our recognition program. So that's just, it's refreshing, to be honest, the, the way that there's that approach. Mm-hmm. Well, it's great to hear. And we'll give a shout out to Taylor Edwards. Um, she, she's in a relatively new role, um, manager of customer success. And, and that team and that function, you know, it's really, it's about um, being responsive. And I think as you were describing, sometimes being proactive to reach out and say, here's something that we think can help you be more successful um, in, in terms of your improvement work. And that, that's good for your success is our success is how yeah. we view this. For me, you know, dealing with a person that does know our business and does, has played a part in developing the solution. So we're not dealing with, you know, one in a thousand people who really doesn't know our business. We're dealing with the same person consistently and that gives uh, a real value to the support. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that, John. Um, Rob, you know, and again, recap, you're, you're a little earlier in your adoption or rollout or whatever terms sure. you might use, deployment uh, or, yeah. Yeah, Cade, and I don't remember, Cade Jansen, I Cade believe. Cade Jansen, yes. Um, was our original kind of uh, arch- architect kind of expert at what it can and can't do that helped us and the team before I got there begin to build out and design what the solution would do. And our goal was to keep it fairly, fairly simple to begin with to make sure we got adoption because we used an advisory group to help us do that internally of team owners and team leaders that that helped us craft that. Um, So Cade was really there at the onset and he did the heavy lifting as far as making it real, (laughs) okay? And um, Adam Darnell, the training man. Training and enablement manager. He is outstanding. He is the voice of Kinexus. I listened to all the videos and watched mm-hmm. them and was very impressed with his level of detail. And um, he's been a great partner. He's, he's, you know, designed and put together a number of custom videos for us to help based on our version of the Kinexus solution. And lastly, um, and the leader for us is also Taylor Edwards. Mm-hmm. Um, she is outstanding. And the fact that we share share her with John is surprising because I guess we're a very demanding customer or a very needy customer being 15,000 employees large. Um, but she's doing a great job and she's, you know, she doesn't say no. She, she let me take that back and bring it to our product development team. And, you know, that's a great idea. And, you know, there might be a way to do that. And, you know, hearing what John's doing with it, using it for their reward system, mm-hmm. I want to hear more, you know, <laughs> how because the more you can bring into it makes it more visible and makes it more efficient is kind of how I believe we're headed. Is yeah. The more improvement related, employee related things we can do from both an HR and an improvement perspective, efficiency, quality, the better off we're going to be in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, uh, we, we want engaged customers, 
Rob. So demanding is not a word we would use. We'd rather have you um, giving us feedback and um, pulling on uh, people's help. Um, you know, you mentioned Adam Darnell. He does uh, the product update videos that are available on the Kinexus YouTube channel. There's uh, the monthly, uh, we call them uh, office hours for customers to tune in and learn about new features and um, to interact. So you're right, Adam does a great job with those. But yeah, one other thing just to highlight and reinforce for the audience when we talk about how your two organizations represent so many different dimensions of the Kinexus customer base, just to reemphasize that size and scale. Um, 150 employees, you said, John? Yeah. 15,000 employees in Rob's organization. You know, we're, we're there to support all of you and, and the work that you're doing um, in, in, in different ways. So um, we have a question. We're going to take one of the audience questions, and then we're going to take a short break for some announcements and give uh, John and Rob a chance to have a sip of water and uh, catch their breath. We have a question that came in from Lydia, and I think this is a question for either of you. Um, do you set year-over-year -year cost savings expectations? How does this tool facilitate and track those savings? UMass does not. So. Straight out. Not. So tell us more about that. And I think there's, there's, there's sort of a philosophical reason for that. I believe so. It was one of the things that shocked me when I first came on board. Um, it's, it's that little improvements blowing in the wind can move the, everybody rowing in the same direction is a huge deal. And if you get everybody rowing in the same direction, you're keeping it simple and you're not disengaging the people because one of the fears or misuses of improvement has been head count reduction, right? Mm -hmm. We've all been a part of that if you're part of Lean or part of Six Sigma. And that's not what it's about. It's about making right. a better place to work and a, delivering better care for our, our patients. Mm -hmm. You know, our true North goal is to be the best place to get care and the best place to give care as an organization mm -hmm. in Massachusetts. So. Yeah. Um, we don't want to detract from that. And I think you could end up spending a lot of time spinning your wheels on those goals. Are they not important? No, they're very important. Mm -hmm. But I think if, if you get people going in the right direction, that's going to come, you know, and there are people that are responsible for that piece of it. And we'll just be continuous improvement experts. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I know from talking to your CEO, Dr. Dixon, and, and later on, after I do the announcements, I'll, I'll put a link in the chat. You know, I had an, a chance to interview him some years ago where he talks about using Kaizen or continuous improvement as a financial turnaround strategy, that when he came in and took the job, um, there was a very heavy debt load. Mm. Uh, financial performance for the system was really yeah. struggling. And so uh, I think, you know, there, there's this interesting coexistence of not some organizations, would, let's say, we're, we're not going to demand a cost savings for every improvement, but we are at the same time recognizing that th th there are benefits that are going to flow through to the bottom line, because um, that's important, whether it's survival mode or just getting back into, um, you know, thriving instead of just surviving. Um, so thank you for sharing that, Rob. Um, John, what are your thoughts on that? How does Crosby's look at um, cost savings or maybe more Brent, more generally tracking other benefits from your improvement work? Um, <clears throat> until, until this year, um, we had not really got any expectations on cost savings, but we've actually set this year um, through continuous improvement. The goal this year is to save $500,000 in cost savings um so we are tracking that and the way we do that in kinexus is when we get to when we get to the end point of a project or an improvement um we'll obviously review review the savings and the anticipated savings but we actually get our accounting team to verify that these are the improvement the improvement seen um what we expected it to see so Kinexus makes it really easy for that to flow into their workflow. Um, and yeah, we so what we did, uh, again, with Taylor's help was 
Uh, every improvement we measure for an impact on safety, an impact on morale, um, quality, whether there's any quality benefits to it. So we built out some metrics around that. Um, and then obviously hard savings and soft savings. Um, so one of our challenges has always been before Kinexus was that when we were doing continuous improvement, somebody might be keeping it in a Excel sheet, somebody else in another department would be writing it on a whiteboard. And now in Kinexus, it kind of takes you through that at the end of the improvement, the way we've built it. So nobody has to think about it because it's just part and parcel of the workflow. And then obviously it all wraps up together in the reports that have been built. So um, yeah, that's how we do it and, and we do do it. Um, and it's really nice because we can share that with anybody and everybody that has access. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that, that sharing, you know, Rob, you mentioned that earlier. That, that's one common theme across a lot of our customers. There's this philosophical um, view that transparency is a good thing for, for many, many reasons. Um, and then, you know, just come back to, you know, the question about facilitating and tracking savings, you know, the Kinexa software is very flexible to fit different organizations needs and frameworks and what they're tracking. Um, so when people do improvements, whether it's small improvements or projects or A3s or however it's labeled, organizations can configure, do you want to track, do you want to categorize things, mm -hmm. safety, quality, cost, delivery, morale are common categories. People can also then track specific numbers. And I'm, I'm gonna put a link um, to the chat that uh, if people wanna take a look later, we do have a page on our website where we publish the, the cumulative total um, customer impact numbers. And um, our CEO, Greg Jacobson, sends out an email to the team every month of what those updated numbers are. Again, like they're out on the website, uh, but, but Greg labels it, and I know he sincerely means it, that it's his favorite email um, to send every month. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this briefly, and then I'm gonna switch over to um, slides with some announcements. So you know, if you go to that page, I mean, there, there's a cumulative, and again, this is customer self-reported data across all of our customers over now, um, 10 years, um, you know, 359,000 improvements, um, you know, five, almost $5 billion um, financial impact. But then you can also start breaking that down into cost savings, cost avoidance, um, revenue enhancement, time savings, um, you know, quality improvement, safety improvement. Some of those improvements, as important as they are, are difficult to translate into dollar terms. So that's why, you know, we, we like to talk about um, you know, a wide range of, of categories of benefits um, that, that, you know, if you think we share the philosophy, if we um, improve in all these er other areas, it will flow through to the bottom line and uh, in different ways. So I um, just wanted to share that. And then let me just bring up real quickly a few announcements, a um, couple of announcements here real quickly. Um, so I mentioned earlier, they just did one yesterday. So the June training team office hours has not yet been um, announced, but uh, that'll be uh, announced soon. If you're on our email list, you'll get notified that as uh, a customer. Um, Adam Darnell, you see pictured there, and, um, and Noah Perator from our team are, are doing those together. And then also want to let you know that our next uh, presentation style webinar, we just hosted one on Tuesday. We do these monthly. Um, Dr. John Kanegi is going to be doing a webinar on June 15th. The registration is going to be open real soon. Um, he's got a really interesting perspective. You know, he's a, um, a, a medical doctor. Um, he's been involved, he's written a book called uh, um, Design to, or he talks about uh, adaptive design, Designed to Adapt, I think is the name of the book. And he's gonna be giving a presentation that I think will have broad appeal to people across industries, kind of building upon what's often referred to as the Toyota Kata methodology or the improvement Kata. Um, John has developed um, some interesting perspectives on what he calls a leadership Kata. So the registration for that uh, will be open soon. You can keep an eye out for that at kinexus.com slash webinars. Or if you're signed up to receive our blog posts and other updates via email, we'll tell you about these 
when they're available. Um, so I also want to mention, uh, like I said, our blog at blog.kinexus.com. We have our continuous improvement webinar library that includes the session that Dr. Joy Dobson did um, on Tuesday about a very innovative vaccination clinic design. That's all available um, if you go to kinexus.com slash webinars or our YouTube library. And then we also have a podcast, the Kinexus Continuous Improvement Podcast. Um, you can find it anywhere you find or listen to podcasts and the audio of today's session will be in the podcast feed later today. Okay, so that is it for the announcement. So we'll, we'll, we'll jump back into um, some other questions. You know, um, maybe you know, we, we'll dive a little bit more into the software. Um, how do you use Kinexus to help facilitate and support? Maybe let's talk a little bit more specifically here about the bottom up improvement work, the just do it, the small Kaizen improvements that you're trying to engage everybody in. John, do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, so um, we, we weren't doing just do it um, up to probably two years ago. And uh, we visited one of the things we were doing when we were on a, the beginning of our continuous improvement journey was visiting other facilities to try and learn and understand uh, what was succeeding and working there. And um so we were exposed to just do it in one of their facilities and it seemed like such an obvious avenue to go down. Um, so, yeah, so we rolled that out um, and we were doing just do it, but our just do it were um, paper driven. So people writing it down on a piece of paper, handing it into their supervisor or the lead hand, the lead hand putting it into an Excel sheet and then, you know, somebody else looking at the Excel sheet and trying to figure out what was going on and then, trying to implement it and then measure the improvement. It was all very clunky. Um, so yeah, so when we when we got Kinexus, it was one of the things that I asked Taylor around and about. And so we we rolled that out in Kinexus. And so now we use the kiosk feature, um, or we did use the kiosk feature for people to be able to go to the tablet, put in their improvement. And the nice way that it was designed was that if I was, if I had an improvement, I was in the accounting department, it would, it would go to my champion. So we had a champion of continuous improvement in each area. It would go to my champion in the accounting department so that we knew who was looking after it. That champion would get notified. Um, and then the system would take them through the way we developed it, take them through the measuring, the impact of the improvement that, that was made. Um, so now we have a huddle board for each just do it program in each area. So the accounting team have one, the quality assurance team have one, the operations team have one. And so they can all go, everybody can go there, see the improvements that have been brought forward, um, who had the, who had the idea. Um, and then the other really important part is if it's not a, an idea that we're going to implement, then letting people know we're not implementing it and these are the reasons why mm -hmm. and and that's all works very well in kinexus and, and a lot better than the system we had before yeah, yeah it's just to, to emphasize that point um you know i think the 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 goal it's often stated is you know you, you want to be implementing something around you know ninety percent of the time when an idea comes in, and that doesn't mean the initial idea necessarily, but it means you have a conversation, you discuss it, you find something that at least somewhat addresses the issue. Um, that that's part of you know what's taught by Toyota, Masaki, Amai, and um, Alan Robinson, who I believe you know I think he I think because he's local. Um, I think Robinson is at UMass Boston. I think he's had some influence on um, the improvement approach there at um, UMass Health, um, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, one of the things that, that was really reinforced to me and we try to pass along is if you do have to say no, have that conversation and give that feedback as you were putting it, John, the reasons why. It's not because we don't like you, uh, <laughs> you know, um, 
that there may be, like I've seen in healthcare sometimes, maybe this is true in food production, there may be some regulatory reason why something seems like a good idea. And, you know, we're, there, there, there's this barrier and we can't do anything about it. So we'll try to explain that kindly and, and do a little education maybe. Um, but I think that's, that's one really important thing to just close the loop and not just have the idea rejected. You know, I think of the old suggestion box system where somebody might have their paper form literally rubber stamped with something uh, cruel, like rejected or denied. Well, I think, I think for us, that was one of the things that really helped foster engagement as well, because people had put their ideas in and then they were like, okay, nothing's happened. And so like, where's my idea gone? Did you implement it? You're going to implement it. Um, and then people don't want to put their ideas forward because they don't think they're being heard. Uh -huh. So there's no way to lose them now because as soon as they put submit, it's in the system. So, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. um, I hear that a lot. People say, we have a lot of good ideas. We just forget to follow up. Or um, yeah, the, you know, that, that's why we emphasize uh, we, 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 don't, we never call Kinexus an electronic suggestion box because there are, and Rob, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to elaborate on that, Rob, nodding his head vigorously for those who are just listening, um, because there are so many, if you will, fatal flaws in that old suggestion box model, and, and research shows suggestions would get rejected more like 97% of the time, and like you said, John, God, yeah, that's demoralizing. So I think you know, the worst thing you can do is say, we want your ideas and then collect those ideas and then not take action. That's worse than mm -hmm. never asking. Um, so uh, Rob, I'd love to hear your, your thoughts. You, you've, you, you perked up, you shook your head, tell us more. Yes, when we purposely don't want a suggestion box. This is about employees' ideas for their immediate work area and their scope. It is not about the big picture. Really, it's more about what they do every day. And that's why everybody has access to our Kinexus application. Um, anybody can go to their own mobile phone or the phones that the company provides to 5,000 of our workers that Taylor helped us push out the connection to, um, to input at 724. And it's up to the team of your peers, led by a, probably a supervisor or manager, to facilitate or rotate the facilitation and come to the agreement of what's priority and what's less priority. And some things may be deferred, some things may be planned. Mm -hmm. We really tried to match our physical idea board's layout because there was a standard layout for that and we tried to do it within Kinexus in our idea boards for each and every one of those 400 plus teams as of right now. Mm -hmm. um, and we made suggestions about what your flow through an agenda would be at a huddle, um, but that's not what you have to do. Your team can adopt what they want, but generally it's taking, let's look at what's in flight, what's new, if it's new, do we go forward with it or do we table it or we do a kibosh it? We used our old terms and put them into innovation station. I mean, Kinexus to allow us to make that transition crossover more easy, easier yeah. and simpler for people. So we're not changing the language entirely of improvement. It's, it's still the same stuff. It's just now, as, as John said, we don't lose stuff. <laughs> it doesn't get lost on a sticky that fell off yeah. and got vacuumed up by the cleaning crew at night, you know, yeah. that was on the idea board. <laughs> it's there and it's managed and there's reminders and there's communication and there's so much that it does for us as a organization that, that makes it easier to work with. This is my opinion only easier to work with idea systems. And it takes a little getting used to, but it's really pretty darn intuitive and simple for rolling it out to over 8,000 people. As of right now, we've had virtually no one saying, I don't want to play, mm. which is surprising to us. 
Well, we, uh, we had a comment come in in the chat earlier from one of your colleagues there at UMass Health. Christina said, my team is up and running on Kinexus and the transition was smooth and easy. We find the site easy to use and the functionality for tracking ideas and progress is great. We tracked our ideas manually before and having options built in the system is fantastic. So we're, we're always happy to hear that the software is easy to use, but we also know, again, software alone doesn't drive culture. There's the leadership that comes from Dr. Dixon on down, the leadership that comes um, from, from the team there at Crosby's that, that has to add, I, you know, I think, energy to all of this to, to where people do feel or, or people are listened to and engaged. That's, that's such a big part of this. Um, one thing I also just um, remembered to put in the chat, I did look up the audio of um, Dr. Eric Dixon um, talking about um, you know, the, the early days of, of his time there at UMass Health and, and how Lean was a helpful um, turnaround strategy, employee engagement um, as a turnaround strategy. So um, we had one other question that came in. It was directed for you, John. Um, so if you're looking at planning for continuous improvement by thinking about lessons learned, uh, corrective actions, training towards ensuring quality, reliability, and zero defects, I guess I'll frame that into, I guess, you know, just have, you know, in addition to continuous improvement practices, what, what do you see uh, the role of training and the role of closing the loop? You, you mentioned this earlier, um, tracking the effectiveness, tracking lessons learned. Let's say even if you try something that didn't work, that's, that's how I'll, I'll build upon what was submitted there, um, if, if, if that's a question that triggers some thoughts. Um, yeah, so um, really thinking about... Um, effectively solving problems so um, every single day in kinexus and with with all our problems we're really trying to get to a root cause um, and put in an effective preventative measure so as i said earlier prior to kinexus we would put in a solution and say okay guys we fixed the problem let's carry on and we'd probably be talking about the same problem a month later, thinking that our solution was effective, but it wasn't. So, so the, simple, the simple thing that Kinexus allows us to do is to set that review date of the implemented improvement. So it automatically does it as a month away, but we can set that to be six months or a year, and we can review the, the actual implementation of the preventative measure as frequently or as often as we like and it automatically cycles through comes up in our huddle board so if it's due for the 20th of may we'll have reviewed it this morning and said okay okay guys we implemented this six months ago are we seeing the results we expected to see whereas before kinexus we wouldn't even be asking that question we would have done it six months ago and not even know whether it was effective or not so, so that mechanism happening with each improvement or each root cause and each solution just helps solidify that the improvement sticks. And that's how we'd really get to trying to improve quality and, and, and safety and, and all the important metrics. Mm -hmm. And I know some organizations use Kinexus to specifically track um, training and belt certifications. Um, would be one example of a different use case mm -hmm. um, for for Kinexus. Um, we we haven't used that module yet, so we've actually we've actually been working with Taylor on um, again have adapting it. And I know you guys have done a lot of um, development work on the badges module. So um, we actually spoke with Taylor this morning and. There's a couple more things that we'd we'd asked for that she's taking back. So um, yeah, so again, it just speaks to the flexibility and the, uh -huh. the willingness to change and, and solve our problems. Yeah, and and we appreciate that engagement when when customers have ideas and uh, they bring those um, they bring those to us. Um, but you made me think of um, oh, there was one other thing that that you said that. I was going to follow up on and um, 
it'll come back to me. Um, we had another question that came in here. I think um, you've touched on this a little bit, but maybe as a recap, um, how do you keep informed about new features that are introduced in Kinexus? Um, how do you try those and, and roll them out and train them? I'll just start because we are trying to keep up with the ship, <laughs> you know, in that regard. Um, some of these things that have come out, there is a video provided, there's some training material, there's a webinar. I mean, Kinexus does a darn good job of, of educating its customer base of what the advantages are. But we're still at the point of rolling out to the first, to all of our employees, what has been the core. We integrate some of those improvements as we see them applicable, but we're trying not to over-engineer anything yet. There's going to be a, a phase two of this, but we've got to get everybody on board and feeling comfortable with it. So that's kind of our perspective. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would really say the same. Um, when it comes to actually implementing and rolling out the training, um, we, we always know that Kinexus and um, your team are there available to, to help with the training. Um, so if it's something that I'm not familiar with or a new a new piece of software, then we'll we'll usually utilize you guys to do it. But oftentimes it's things that are changes to existing systems. So I'll I'll facilitate the training. Um, but we've not really used them. I've never really used all the videos and things that you guys have got. So I think that's something that I've learned from Rob that we could probably start doing and utilizing a lot more. I'm in some of those um, kind of more <laughs> Kaizen instructional videos. You know, Adam Darnell and others are the uh, the product experts, or as we say internally, the kind experts. Um, <laughs> but there are other videos that Greg Jacobson and I have done that are um, you know kind of more about the leadership and methodology side. And um, you know, our team understands a lot of that and the technology piece um, that we help all of our customers with. So. Um, we're getting close to the top of the hour, and we'll, I think we'll go ahead and uh, and wrap up because we've we've got a hard stop here at the top of the hour. But uh, again, just to summarize, I, I want to really thank our two panelists today, um, Rob Pitney from UMass Memorial Health, John Brown uh, from Crosby's. If you are in a part of Canada or the Northeast where you see Crosby's products on the shelf, please buy some. <laughs> I, for, I don't know what to say. If, if you are in the Worcester, Massachusetts area and you need health care, please visit our friends at UMass Health. Um, <laughs> but two very different circumstances, two very different organizations. But, you know, it's just it's really exciting to see that the Kinexus uh, team and, and our software has um, played at least some part in supporting you and your improvement journeys and the important work that you do. Um, so, Rob and John, thanks. Thanks to both of you. Um, thanks to everybody for attending today. And as, as we say, or I think Adam and the others say it in their videos, um, we'll see you kind next time. Yes. <laughs> we make everything a something next, right? We'll see you kind next time. I don't know why I always hesitate to say that, but. <laughs> Thank okay. you. See you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks. thanks a lot. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye. Thanks everybody for attending. <laughs>